Hi, today we are testing the grid trading strategy. It's a very simple approach that doesn't require any technical indicators to check the trend. So we don't need to guess the trend in advance since we are trading in both directions at the same time. It's a good candidate for algorithmic trading and the backtest using Python language shows a steady equity increase over two months of data using the five minutes time frame. It has a surprising set of test ratios scoring almost 5.7 for the sharp ratio. And as usual, if you are interested in the coding part, you can download the Jupyter notebook file from the link in the description below. 10 years ago, when I started trading as a hobby, I remember turning $100 with my cents account into something around $1,250 within six weeks of trading using exactly this system. It might have been beginner's luck, but anyway, we're going to test this today. The idea is to create a grid of values on top of our chart. And every time the price crosses the grid lines, we're going to open a long and a short position at the same time. The take profit is set at the next grid line for each opened position. For example, if we take this chart, we are opening our first couple of positions, the long one and the short one right here. And then at the next grid level, we close the winning position and we open two additional positions, one long, one short position. And every time we are crossing the grid line, one trade is going to be closed and two others are going to be opened and so on. So some of the trades are going to be closed immediately. Some others we have to wait a bit before hitting the take profit value. I know what you're thinking. What about these losing trades that are left opened on the edge of our grid? It can happen on the upper edge of the grid and on the lower edge. Some of these positions are never going to hit their take profit values. And this is the difficulty in this particular strategy. There are different ways of dealing with this. Some traders might close the remaining trades at midnight at the end of the trading day. Another option is to simply calculate if we are in an overall profit situation every six hours, for example, and close everything and start all over again with a new grid. There's no single solution for this because it's going to depend on other parameters we are using, like the time frame, the maximum allowed number of parallel trades, and the grid distance in between those lines, and so on. One way I'm going to apply today during our coding part is to use a stop loss value for each of these trades using the ATR distance. It might not be the best way, but we're going to start with this and then we can modify the code. You can download it, modify it and experiment what would be the best scenario for your strategy. The reason this system might work in a lot of cases, it's because it takes advantage of the noise of the market. So as long as the market is oscillating all around this grid, it's going to cut through our take profits and open positions in both ways, like long and short positions. And theoretically, the system works best on lower time frames because this is where the noise comes into our profit. We're looking for a noisy market, meaning more price oscillations, and therefore we expect our profits to increase in this way. There are two reasons making the system attractive. First, First, we don't have to guess the trend, so no need for any indicator. Because anyway, we're not following any trend. In this case, we're just opening positions in both directions. And the second reason is that we just have to manage our opened losing trades. We don't have to do anything else. And one good advantage which makes this strategy easier to code is that we only need one adjustable parameter, which is the grid distance. Obviously, we're going to choose a time frame, but in terms of a strategy, there's only one parameter that we're going to tune, which is the grid distance or the distance in between these lines of the grid that we are seeing here. OK, let's write this in Python and apply our backtest. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We're importing Y Finance to download the data, importing Pandas, NumPy and Pandas Technical Analysis, just because we're going to use the ATR. I'm downloading the data for EURUS dollar between these two dates, the start and the ending date. And I'm using the five minutes time frame for this test. And then I'm printing my data frame just to make sure that everything is downloaded properly. The open price, the high, low, close and the adjusted closing price. Then I'm going to define three variables that we're going to use in this program. The grid distance that we already talked about. So for now, I'm using 0.005 for the euro US dollar. And remember, this is going to be dependent on the time frame you are using and the asset you are trading. 
The take profit stop loss ratio, I'm using 1.5, but for now, let's keep it one as a first trial. And the mid price of my grid, meaning my grid is going to be built around an average price, which is 1.065. And again, this is dependent on the asset you are trading. And here for the Euro US dollar, this is a good middle price. It can be calculated like the average price uh, of the uh, asset within the last 30 days or 60 days or so. Then I'm creating a function define generate my grid and it's going to take these three values mid price, grid distance and the grid range. The grid range is basically the minimum and the maximum values in between which I would like to divide my price range into a grid. And that's easily done in Python using NumPy. So I'm using the A range uh, function between the mid price minus the grid range and the mid price plus the grid range. Then again, it's the grid distance that's going to define the distance in between the lines of my grid. So to call this function, I'm going to call it generate underscore grid. I'm going to provide the three parameters and the grid range here is equal to 0.1. So I'm going to have a grid that's ranging from 1.065 plus 0.1, so 1.165, and 1.065 minus 0.1, 0.965. So once we generate the grid, I'm going to print the values just to make sure that my function is working good. And this is the array of values where my grid is going to be generated. So these are the lines or the positions of the lines that we have seen a few minutes ago in the presentation. And as expected, it's ranging from 0 0.965 up to 1.165. Then we're going to generate our signal. So first I'm creating a list of signal equals zero, meaning there is no signal of the same length of my data frame. In other words, for each of the candles that we have in our data frame, the signal is equal to zero for the moment, meaning we will not execute nor long nor short positions. Then we will go through all the candles in our data frame and we will check if these candles are crossing any lines of our grid in both directions, in the long direction or in the short direction. Then the signal for this particular candle is equal to one, meaning we're crossing one line of our grid. And this is where we are going to execute a short and a long position at the same time. And again, just to make sure that my reasoning worked properly, I'm going to print the candles or the rows where the signal is equal to one. So it's working perfectly fine. Now I'm just going to take a copy of my data frame. This is in case you want to take a slice of the data frame and test on part of the data instead of the whole data frame. But anyway, in this case, we're just copying the whole data frame and I'm defining a signal function which returns the signal column value for each row. Then we can compute the ATR as a new column in our new data frame. And as you can see, we are providing the high, the low, the closing price and the length is equal 16. So we're using 16 as a period for the ATR. And here we can use the backtesting package to backtest our strategy. This is the signal here. We just defined the function. So it's going to store the signal of the current row into self.signal1. So the variable called signal1. And for each candle where we have a signal, so if the signal is equal to 1, we're going to execute both buying and selling positions. But first, we're going to check if we have any open trades. And this is something a uh, parameter that we can modify. So if I already have two open trades, I'm still allowing two additional trades. Maximum, there should be four trades in this case opened at the same time. We could increase this or decrease it according to our preference. But if we increase it, it's going to increase our risk. And if we decrease it, it's going to lower our risk in trading. So to open these trades, I'm going to define the stop loss variable. And for the moment, I'm trying just the closing price minus the SL ATR. We're not using the ATR yet. We're using just the grid distance here as a stop loss value. And the take profit is going to be equal to the closing price plus the um, ATR times the take profit stop loss ratio. The ratio for the moment is equal to one. 
and the stop loss ATR is equal to the grid distance. So I'm just executing the system that we have presented at the beginning of this video. This is for a long position and for the short position, we're going to use the same strategy, the same approach, only in the opposite direction. Our margin is one over two. We're starting with $100 in cash and we can run this and we're getting 7.8% in return. This is almost in two months, 57 days. It beats the uh, buy and hold return in percentage. And the sharp ratio is 2.45 for those who are following these ratios to evaluate the strategy. We can as well plot the um, return or the equity. As we can see that the equity is increasing, it reaches up to 8% as maximum. We have a drawdown right here and then it increases again. So overall, I didn't tune any of the parameters. I just put everything into a code. I run it for the first time over the couple of months and it looks like it's profitable. Bear in mind that we didn't include any commissions or any fees in those trading. So most probably you would like to tune those parameters to make more profit cover up for all the fees and the commissions that are involved in trading. And now the interesting part, let's just replace the grid distance for the stop loss that we are using by the value of the ATR, which taking into account the volatility of the market at the moment of passing the trades. And if we run this, we're going to get something as 6.2% in return, but a sharp ratio of 6.39. And this is where it's starting to get interesting. So if we plot this, just to visualize what we are getting, this is what we get. It's true that the percentage of the return is not huge, but the equity uh, curve looks much nicer in this case. We have less drawdown periods and it's constantly increasing. It looks like it works well with the ATR. So again, I didn't really spend more than 15 minutes optimizing or trying it out. You might want to spend uh, a day or two or think about how to exit the strategies. Maybe you want to use the RSI or something like that, but at least you have a base start with the code. This is the way it works. And it's honestly probably the easiest program I've ever made in trading, bringing such positive results. You might also want to change the margin because we always take leverage in trading. And this is how you can further increase your returns to 15%. But then again, it will affect your sharp ratio. Now it's 4.9 for this strategy. And, um, but anyway, it increases your returns at the expense of increasing your risk. That's all I had to tell you for today's trading system. I hope you guys liked it. If so, please support the channel, drop comments, give ideas, share ideas with us. We're always willing to take these. Actually, this one was proposed by one of your comments. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.